Uh, it was quite an extraordinary trip, and I had a little camera, as you'll see, just recording it, just recording everything, as I usually do. And then, uh, when I got back to Canada and I was waiting for the budget for one of the bigger films to come together, I was getting very frustrated and I needed to make something. And I just thought of taking these images, putting them into my computer, and structuring it as a letter to our son. Uh, about a trip that he would never remember, uh, which, as we say, changed uh, our lives. And there's lots of questions this is going to raise, and we'll ask them after the film. It's really a, a journal in some ways. It's very unpretentious, uh, but it raises certain things. I think uh, it's the ideal place to show it, and I hope you enjoy it. This is Citadel. It's an hour and a half long, and then we can talk afterwards. Last thing I probably want to do is share me seeking more after that. But, uh, like I said, it was a really a homemade thing that I did, really uh, not really to be shown. You know, I, I've been very selective about you know, just showing it to small groups of people. It was something that uh, kind of consumed me for a while. I think it was the first time I actually edited something myself. I actually made this entirely, you know, uh, myself, which you can do now with the technology, of course, you know, you just shoot it, and it is, you know, the microphone, and you just speak and kind of uh, create this thing, so. And it's also a, a, a funny document somewhere between um, being a journal and being a, a fiction as well, because there are, there are certainly fictional or fictionalized elements to it, which uh, uh, might be uh, disturbing to find out. But I, I couldn't really help but uh, proceed on that basis because I didn't really feel there was any other way of constructing it. You know, it was uh, um, so. For instance, the uh, the architect that we meet by chance in the street is is a friend. You know, and uh, there are other things which are clearly constructed. I mean. And I think that that's one of the ideas that the film proposes, is that we are very easily led into these things once uh, we are given permission to believe something, and that that has ominous overtones as well. And I think that uh, you know this film was, was shot before the current uh, troubles in, in Lebanon, so it's very interesting how it anticipates a lot of what's uh, happening. Uh, though, though in a in a superficial way. So I don't know if any of you had any questions about it, or any of you found it, you know, I don't know, really, let's just have an honest forum about it, because I'm really surprised, I haven't shown it to many people, so, you know, you're all bright people, so if you have any strong reactions one way or the other, yeah. Yeah, a couple of questions. What does your wife think of the film? She doesn't really like it, I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, she, she didn't know that this was going to be used for anything other than you know, that being said, though, there are scenes that we did spontaneously dramatize. I mean, so I can't, you know, we have an odd relationship, clearly. I mean, so that when we did see those two kids, and we were really shocked to see that, even though the guy didn't steal, you know, the machine or there wasn't any consequence, but we did dramatize that scene. We both sort of felt that that was something to do as a way of kind of dealing with our own shock and what we were encountering. So... I guess it's also a chronicle of a very, you know, uh, there's, you know, it, it's unusual. I think one of the things that was, because we had a retrospective of the films uh, last month in, in Paris, and it is unusual that, you know, we've had this relationship for as long as we have uh, in terms of, you know, my photographing her, you know, and, and uh, this strange ritual, you know, which, which is difficult to let go of I mean, once you start it, once you actually begin that. And what do you plan to give to your son? Uh, you know, th that's the other fable. I mean, he's seen it. I mean, there's no, you know, like, uh, it's not as though it's been withheld from him. I mean, you know, he was aware that I was working on it and, uh, you know, he was, I was showing, you know, th that's again, it's, a, it's sort of, a, it, it's a dramatic uh, device. The whole idea of it being a, a forbidden letter is sort of a dramatic device. It's not... It's not, it's not, uh, 
there's nothing in it he couldn't see. Though that's true about his mother smoking and things like that. I mean, so he found out through the film that that was, uh, you know, that was what was going on. What did he think? Um, again, you know, I, I, I think when you, uh, like I, I've never, you know, uh, let him, I mean, if he wants to watch the films, uh, you know, then he's free to, but I'm never going to, like, you know, tell him he has to watch this or provoke his reaction. I'm much, I think there's much more important things for him to be reading and watching than his daddy's movies, you know. So, uh, you know, I think that uh, uh, he, uh, you know, he, I'm much more interested in kind of discussing his reaction to... Animal Farm right now, which is the book he just finished. So I mean, I think that that's uh, you know he, he'll 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 respond to these uh, films uh, when and if he ch chooses later on. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about the process of constructing it and the fact that what you had preconceived and you 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 know you happen to be shooting in the Citadel and then you came across these two boys. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, I mean, well, I also wanted to know, you said you found it shocking. I mean, I, I, would, I guess I would find it surprising, but I wanted to know what the, if the shock value was the fact that it's an Islamic. Yeah, I mean, you know, the shock is that, in fact, the, it was a public space, and the fact was that if they were caught, they would have been in right. real trouble. Now, what we didn't know while we were there is that, in fact, you know, uh, Tripoli has a quite a strong gay scene. And uh, what we didn't know also was that, uh, though it seemed very public, uh, that was a particular area that, uh, for some reason, is sort of sequestered. But we didn't know any of that. And in fact, you know, if they were caught in that culture, uh, in a public space, that they would have been severely reprimanded. So we—that's what we were reacting to. And if you hadn't come across that scene, that 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 scene we came across uh, uh, early on in the trip. So a lot of what we were then reacting to was. You know, uh, have, have that scene had, had happened, and then um, uh, let's see that moment in Sabran Shatia. I mean, that was also a weird coincidence. Like, uh, like uh, so, um, things began to sort of develop. But you know how it is. It's quite amazing. I think. I mean, many of you. I mean, I've never shot a documentary, and but it's strange that when you are in the process, sometimes your antenna are in a particular place, and you are uh, somehow responding to circumstances in a different way. I mean, I think you are also doing that when you're creating drama and you're tuned to certain uh, frequencies in a way that you couldn't be all the time. But uh, I found that this was uh, a really strong experience from that point of view, especially in that culture, uh, where you felt that there were these negotiations that were going on at all moments. Uh, that it, it, and, and it seemed, on the one hand, there's something very casual, but there's something very uh, uh, strained as well. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, I think, that, I think that it actually, the country itself is based on a number of, of governing uh, mythologies. Uh, and I think, even though I sort of go over it very quickly, and I'm not sure how many of you actually picked it up, but that whole idea of how the Constitution is formed it, it is very unusual. And it is quite, um, quite bizarre that that it, though it functions as a democracy, uh, it's true that the outcome is fixed. I mean, and that that balance has to be kept at all times. Which is why I think the whole um, the Palestinian situation, you know, threatened to overwhelm that. And uh, you know, it, you know, it, it, it's. And I think what's, what's going on now is also, you know, really troubling because that's going to overwhelm that constitution as well. If they were to take a census now and figure out how many uh, Christians are left in Lebanon, I don't think that they'd be able to sustain the current constitution. I think it's just based on this, on this myth. And it's probably been like that for a long time, but no one really wants to address that. Maybe, maybe again, it's, it's a result of this uh, colonial, you know, past that it's had.